how are you? Good, sir. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, uh, I'm doing well. We're uh, chugging along on this tour, and it feels pretty good. Yeah, well, for, first and foremost, all right, uh, how's the knee going, man? Are you, are you doing okay? And I would assume that Josh has done a lot of apologizing since this all went down. But are you doing all right? Josh is very sorry, and <laughs> my knee is still kind of oozing liquid. But we'll be fine. All It'll... right. <laughs> It's very nice, and I appreciate you being, a, a, being, you know, a professional about it and all, but that looked like that hurt. And I know those sorts of things have to happen, and you got to play through the pain, but yikes, it just didn't look pleasant. Yeah, I mean, you know, as the story goes, I, I tripped on Josh's drumstick that was on stage, and I mean, just, just very uh, unlucky circumstance, but also a lesson learned where, hey, we got to keep make sure that stage stays clear. <laughs> but yeah, my, my left knee kind of hit part of the stage and it kind of sliced it open a little bit, not to be too descriptive. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, uh, I, I, I never, I'm not a huge fan of whenever, whenever an artist or performer is either, maybe they got like a sickness or they're, you know, not feeling well, or they're almost losing their voice or they're injured. I, I don't know if, um, unless obviously there's no way around it, but my default is to is to hide all that on stage. My mm -hmm. default is to present the show as like, this is the only show we're playing, you know, all year. And that's, I really do feel like we need to, you know, individualize each show as that important because there are people who are coming to that show that, that, that see it as that, you know? And so to downplay a specific show or to play it easy or to, you know, just kind of phone it in. It, it I've, that's my biggest fear. I never want to have to do that. And so even though there's some, uh, we're beating up a little bit, there's no reason why we can't attack the show as if it's the only show we have all year. So that's the Amazing. way. We well, we're so excited to have you guys in town a week from Saturday. So a week from tomorrow. And, uh, so Tyler, I'm sure that you get asked favors all the time. Um, but I'm about to ask you one. Uh, this came from my daughter. Uh, she asked me this last night on the way back from uh, band practice. So my yeah. daughter is a freshman in marching band in high school, and she loves it. And I love her doing it. It's so amazing. And tonight is her first halftime performance. But next Saturday is their first band competition. Mm -hmm. They are scheduled to get back until 8.15. So what I'm hoping Maybe you could lose a cord or a microphone for just like 15, 20 minutes. Push it back just a touch so we don't miss anything because she's already missing Peter McPoland, who she loves so much and is bummed out to miss. But she was like, Dad, how are we going to get there? And I'm like, well, honey, I'll get us there as quickly as we can. But, you know, a dad doesn't want to end up in jail or hurt anyone. So she said, well, why don't you ask Tyler if they could push the show back a little bit? So I said that that was very unrealistic, but I'd do it anyway. I'll tell you what. What time do you think you can get there? Oh, we'll be there by, I would say, 8.45 at the absolute latest. Yeah, our show goes on at 8.45. I'll push it to 8.50 for you. I love, I love it so much. Thank you so much, man. And I got to tell you, one of the, the things that I have really appreciated over the years, and as I've talked to you guys a few times and, and seen not only your professional success um, continue to elevate, but to see the men that you guys ha have become, and now you're a dad, you got two kiddos, and I just know, and I know everybody says they love being a dad, but I just know that you do. Tell me, give me like a favorite thing that you like to do. I don't want to get too deep into the relationship with your kiddos, but just tell me like one of your favorite things as a dad that you get to do that you can't wait to get to do. Well, <laughs> for example, so one of the, one of the games that my my oldest daughter and I play is we call we call it Frederick and that is the name she's given me when I act like a dog and so she knows that if I if she touches my nose that's the button that turns me into a dog and that's when I <laughs> Frederick and she said let's play Frederick and she went to reach to touch my nose but I had an injured knee and I couldn't bend my knee so it's very difficult to crawl around on the floor <laughs> with a busted up knee. And I said, Rosie, I, I don't think we can play Frederick. My knee hurts. I can't bend it. She goes, you can just do this. And she did this really funny like bear crawl where her, her legs were straight 
and her hands were out. And so she showed me like, I can just, you, you can be Frederick, but just not bend your knee. And so yesterday before we came back out on the road, we played Frederick and I was, I was straightened. You know, I had my left leg straightened out on one side uh, cause I couldn't bend it, but we still, we still figured out how to play it. So just stuff like that. You realize like, yeah. you know, it is rewarding, but it's also a sacrifice. It feels good to sacrifice about it in that way. Um, it's always, uh, it's always, uh, you know, it's not all, you know, phone and games. There's a lot of sleepless nights and with a kid, you know, having, getting a fever or, you know, getting a cold and, you know, I have to stay up with them at night. And um, you really feel like, wow, I love this thing because I am sacrificing a lot of, you know, you become less, less self-centered when you have a kid. And uh, I think that was good for me. So I'm glad that I'm glad that I've experienced that. Has the band or will the band adjust the way touring happens because of uh, the little ones or will you just pack them up and bring them along with you or yeah I mean they're on they're on the road with us now I mean I think that more than just a a time you know sacrifice it's a money sacrifice which we're fortunate enough to be able to do but to be able to pay for a flight back home to get back to them or, to, you know, have an extra bus on the road so that like when the family's in, they have their own space. And so it's just a little bit of a, it's a financial um, expense, but I, like I said, it's, it's worth it. You know, the money that we spend on making sure that our families are near us. Yeah. We could trim it all out and probably, you know, really, uh, you know, optimize our, you know, uh, it, you know, our costs that go into a show, but, you know, we have some really great people around us that are, that are older than us that have kids of their own that would say it is totally worth it to be, you know, make sure that you spend the money, spend the time to keep your kids and your family close to you when you do this job. And so that's what we're, that's what we're doing. They're out, they're out with us right now. Uh, my oldest daughter is, uh, is at a park, you know, locally, and uh, my mother-in-law's out on the road with us to kind of help us juggle the two kids. Um, I just got off the bus where my, my wife was holding our youngest for her nap. And I, I had to text her because I couldn't talk because I didn't want to wake her up. But like, hey, I'm getting on a call, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in it. The, the dad yeah. life has stopped, even though we're touring. And I think that, like I said, that is not everyone. Not everyone is able to do that. And we're in a position where we can do that. And so we're capitalizing on it. Well, you, you know, one of the things that has always struck me in every conversation that we've had after every new record um, is I know how much you guys care about making sure that whatever it is that you're putting out is of the highest quality of the, of the, uh, you know, I mean, I know that that is something that is legitimately important to you, your fans perspective and making them feel like every show is unique, every, everything. But I've also worked in radio and have been a part of the record industry for about the last like 18 years. And I know that a lot of times there is a push and a pull between the artist and the record label, even as the artist gets bigger. How have you guys been able to maintain sort of your independence as you have absolutely blown the heck up but every time that we talk i just get this idea that and it's not even an idea i know that whatever it is that you're putting out whatever it is that you're showing whatever's happening at the live show is all put there by you because of how much you care i'm interested to know do you do you have those kinds of you know sort of push and pull with the label or with management or anything like that or how you've been able to sort of navigate that part of the gig yeah absolutely that's a uh that's a tension that's always a part of really any artist's career that wants to make a living out of it. There's going to be people that pull you in a different direction or, or kind of want to influence, influence you in a, in a certain um, direction that may be more financially viable or but just a better chance of it, of it succeeding. Fortunately, we're surrounded by really great partners, whether it's our label or our manager, but at the same time there, you know, there is that, that feeling, you know what it is? I go back to like when we first started this thing with the confidence that Josh and I had in this was that this has to come from us. And in the beginning, there was no other choice because us is all that we had. You know, it was just us making the music. It was just us putting on the shows. It was just us getting in the van and traveling. And then as we 
um, kind of brought on partners and people that helped us, whether it's a booking agency and a label and management and just different people to, to really, you know, elevate the whole thing. Um, that's when people started offering to help. And when I say help, I mean, creatively help, whether it's, you know, co-writing with, you know, a producer, or if it's hiring a music director to help create what your set list should be on tour and a guy that, that really like carves out all of your tracks and helps you with your, you know, really tells you what to do and you get up on stage and you're, you're just kind of like running through a track list or a formula that was preset for you. Josh and I have taken active steps to, in a direction to make sure that we aren't relinquishing any of that. We have control of, of the stems and the tracks and the live show and the set list, every decision that we've, we've made in our live show is, has come from us. And, and that, and that obviously bleeds into the records as well. And um, I think that there's just a, uh, I think I've been, a, I've been a fan of artists and bands where you can tell that they've kind of like lost their fan base's trust where you almost want to be like, okay, who, who is, where's this coming from? I know this is coming out of your mouth. I know you're up on stage, but who, you know, what, what, where's this idea really from? Because this feels foreign to me mm -hmm. yeah. I never to alienate our fans in that way. I've always wanted to make sure that every decision we made was only to reinforce the trust that they have, that even if they like it or they don't like it, or if they think it's good or not good, they at least know that the foundation is that it's coming from us and no mm -hmm. one else. So I feel like that, even though we maybe have sacrificed maybe some quality or the ability to overturn, you know, and crank out new songs faster. Um, we've just reserved, like, we know it needs to come from us because that's our number one, you know, our, our trust with our fans that it's not worth, it's not worth risking that. Yeah. I, I actually, this just came to my mind. I had a couple of other questions that I wanted to ask you, but I think this is a, a good way to sort of wrap things up. And I don't know how many times I've interviewed you guys at this point. I mean, it's probably 10. I mean, it's, it's been a lot. But and I, and I know that you don't remember this or wouldn't remember this, but um, my oldest son, who's now 22, it was just a fanatic and still is a fanatic for your band. I mean, he loves you guys. And unfortunately, when he was a soft, sophomore in high school, his mother passed away unexpectedly. And um, it was two years as a father of absolute living hell. And there was one thing that I knew made things better for him in small periods of time. And it was listening to your music and he is 22. Now he's got a great job. He's got a great girl. He's a great young man. And, you know, I know you get to do these kinds of things for other people, but honestly, man, it meant so much to me. You spent a couple of extra minutes with him at a meet and greet and it made such a huge difference to him. And not only that, but just the music, just knowing that that he had this sort of thing to rely on is just something, man, I don't know that I could ever accurately thank you for um, because it 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 every time I see him now, because he doesn't live with us anymore, he's got his own spot, the whole thing. I just think, man, like I wasn't sure we were going to get here. Mm. And the fact that we are. I'm so proud of him. And I just remember some of those days, some of those tough days that he would come home from school and he would put on vessel and he would listen to it at just these huge, so loud. And I never made him turn it down because I always, I know how that music makes me feel, you know? And so it was just a wonderful thing. And, you know, man, I just wanted to tell you just dad to human to human, you know, man, I really just appreciate you guys being good people. Um, it means the world to a lot of us out there. And and no baloney. This, I, I, I'm not a fake person, but um, it, it really just means a lot to me, man. Thank you very much. Hearing something like that. I mean, I, I know that it, maybe you think that, like, I'm hearing stuff like that every day. It's just not true. I'm not. You know, Josh and I get into our routines where we show up to a show. We do sound check. We get up on stage. We do our thing. I mean, yes, we're present. We're there for it. We're putting everything we have into it. But we really, you know, we kind of, if there was one regret we have is the ability to really interact on a one-on-one -on -one level and hear people's stories, you know, hear our fans' perspective. And uh, sometimes we, sometimes we're not able to do that. So hearing that, like, I can't tell you how much that has just like pumped me up with so much excitement and confidence and kind of like a, you know, reinvigorated, um, 
you know, just passion for what I'm about to do tonight, playing a show. And so thank you for sharing that because that, that was awesome. I hey, appreciate and if it was an overshare, I apologize. That's one of those, I'm one of those guys. I'm an oversharer, but uh, as a father, I knew that you would very much appreciate the perspective in which that I came from and as a good human being, because I know you're that first and foremost. Yeah. And uh, as a songwriter, I've made a living of, after, you know, from oversharing. So I, I totally understand. <laughs> Well, hey, man, thank you as always for your time. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Enterprise Center tickets are still available and continued success and good luck, not only to 21 Pilots, uh, but to you guys independently as humans and your family. You're wonderful people, and I'm so thankful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.